Right. Well, as you know, shortly before 10.20pm uh, last night, on Tuesday the 10th of September 2024, 19-year-old Scott Phillips was fatally stabbed at his home at 38 Carey Avenue at Seaton. The investigation is being led by Major Crime now, and we're being supported by Western Districts, Detectives, Uniformed People and other specialist areas from across Crime Service. Um, Scott lived at the address with another male and that person's partner and they've been cooperating in the investigation at this stage. At about 10.19, uh, 10.20 10, last night, um, there was a phone call to triple zero um, by one of the occupants reporting that their friend had been stabbed and was being attacked outside. Um, police attended very shortly afterwards and along with um, ambulance and despite the best efforts of those people, Scott could not be saved. Um, forensic response section attended last night and the process of seeing the area outside the scene and a number of areas along the street where we found a number of items which may or may not be um, of evidentiary value. Uh, we now know that the occupants of the house and a victim went to the Seaton Hotel a short time um, before the attack and they returned home and they were only inside for a matter of minutes and then the power was switched off and Scott went outside um, to investigate the cause of the power going off and then he was ferociously attacked and stabbed a number of times. Um, it's clear from the injuries and the attack on Scott that there was an intention to kill him and his injuries were not survivable. We know that the offender um, is described as being tall with um, athletic, athletic um, build and he tapers into a narrow, narrow waist um, and a number, of victim, a number of witnesses have said that. He was wearing dark coloured clothing, everything he had on was dark coloured and he's described as either wearing a, a dark face mask or a balaclava um, and over the top of that was his hoodie pulled from his top. The CCTV um, that we have, and I believe they're still out searching in wider areas, uh, shows the offender walk south along Philip Avenue and um, just at the side of the house in Fidak Avenue, it's quite possible that's where he put on his mask um, and readied himself for the attack. He then has gone into the front yard and around near the meter box and then very shortly after the power's gone off and then the attacks happened in the darkness. Um, the offender exited the same, the same way. What's critical to the investigation is as, as the offender was going along Fidak Avenue, two cars of interest drove past. One was a small four-door white coloured sedan, similar in appearance to a Hyundai i30. Not necessarily a Hyundai, but it has that, that appearance. So it's a small white uh, car with a rear hatch that comes up. There was also a dark coloured four-door sedan, but family car size, uh, similar in appearance to an early model Ford. But again, uh, emphasise that both of those cars may not necessarily be Fords or Hondos, but they're that type of appearance. Um, all available resources and major crime are committed to this investigation at the moment, together with a large amount of other resource, resources drawn from across crime service and districts. We conducted an extensive search today for CCTV. We did um, road verges, front yards of some houses um, in the area. Um, we found a variety of things. We found, um, we found meat cleavers, we found knives, we found um, gloves, we found masks, we found a whole range of different things in rubbish bins and around the area. And the truth of it is we have no idea what or if any of that is involved in this investigation at the moment. We're hopeful that one or two items may be connected, um, but as for the rest, um, we just don't know. Um, we've been working to build a picture of Scott's life and to work out what was happening in his life, who his friends were, what challenges he had, who he was associating with, all those sorts of things, um, to build a picture of what was happening and uh, help to identify suspects. Um, Earlier this afternoon, we attended a house at Hectorville and conducted a search 
and arrested a 19-year-old Hectorville man from that home for having um, illegal possession of a shotgun and ammunition. And that person was charged at the Watch House and is remanded in custody. Um, obviously, obviously, for us to go there, that was a... Um, we believe that that person might be a person of interest to our investigation, but we have no evidence to incriminate that person at this time. So he will remain there on those other charges and will continue to investigate. We're also pursuing a number of other positive lines of investigation. We have an open mind as to who is involved and how many people might be involved outside of the person who lifted the paper photos. Um, so what we need to know, as I said, is we would like, if there's an innocent explanation for those cars, for the drivers of those vehicles to come forward um, and contact Crime Stoppers tonight. Um, and if there's not an innocent explanation for them, if anybody knows who that was, to contact us. Um, it was also a person, I don't have any image for you, but it was a person on a little electric scooter that rode down Fidock Avenue about the same time. So if, if the person that rode down Fidock Avenue on a scooter is watching tonight, I encourage that person to bring Crime Stoppers um, because we believe he passed the defender. And obviously anyone in that area with dash cam. So the vehicles, the dash cam, anything between 10pm um, and 10.30pm last night. I'm happy for your questions. So the arrested man at Hexaball was not necessarily the suspect who carried out the attack, is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is that um, clearly we thought he may have some involvement in this offence. We've gone, we've investigated, and we have no evidence to show that he's involved as a result of the inquiries we've done now. doesn't mean he's not, but we have nothing to show that he's involved, and we're looking at a number of positive lines of inquiry. So it may or may not be, and there may be others that we're looking at as well. So there could be multiple suspects. Yeah, but there was only one person directly involved in the stabbing in the front yard. Do you believe the victim and the attacker knew each other? Um, it's possible that they did, or it's possible that somebody could have sent somebody else there to do it. So we don't know. Are you investigating a drugs link at all? Um, we don't actually know what the motive for the shooting is. Uh, sorry, we don't know what the motive for the, the stabbing is. Um, we have no nothing concrete to identify the reason for it at this time. And did you say the suspect was at the Simpson Hotel as well, or just the victim? We don't know. Well, we don't know who the suspect is, and we don't know where he was, but we know that the victim and his two friends went to the Simpson Hotel. So his two friends were ones that he lives with, or just yeah. said, yeah. Are police familiar with the property? Uh, police know some of the occupants of the property. Once again, it sounds like a well-planned ambush. Yeah, it's, it's clear um, that there was some previous planning prior to going there and that the offender went there with a strategy in mind and, and that that person intended to kill Scott. In an earlier conference, you said it was a large knife or weapon that was used. Did you um, find any such weapon in the search of neighbouring streets and yards? Yeah, we found some. Um, I found a number of weapons, but we don't know. Um, if they're involved, um, we're hopeful that one of them may be, but we don't know for certain. When will the Hectorville man face court? Uh, should be tomorrow. And will he receive police bail? No, he'll stay in overnight. Okay. Um, well, we'll go through the uh, third point.